When it comes to characterizing a murmur, explaining what we've heard when we've auscultated the patient's chest, there's several things that we need to make sure that we include in our presentation. Those are going to be the timing, the intensity, the pitch, the quality, the location, the radiation, and finally, the position dependence of that murmur. Let's give a little bit more detail to those now. The timing is nice and simple. We've got three things we need to pay attention to. Is it a systolic murmur, a diastolic murmur, or a continuous murmur? In terms of intensity, we've got a little bit more. We've got grades one to six. One is barely audible, only an expert's going to pick up on that. Two, soft but audible. Three, loud but crucially you can't feel a thrill here. Four is loud but you now can feel a thrill. Five, audible with the stethoscope partly off the chest. And six, you can actually hear it without a stethoscope. So thinking something like a metallic heart valve. In terms of the pitch, nice and simple, we've got another three. Is it a high, medium, or low pitch murmur? Quality goes to four. Have we got a blowing, harsh, rumbling, or perhaps a musical murmur? Then we want to think about that location. Whereabouts are we hearing it? The apex, the left sternal border. Where does it move to? So for example, an aortic stenosis can radiate up to the carotids. And finally, does the position of the murmur change with the position of the patient? I, if we get the patient to lean forward, does that change the murmur, as we might see in aortic regurgitation? So hopefully that's helped you understand what you need to include in the presentation of your murmurs.